All right, we are back with another uh, episode of uh, Avid 19. I think this is uh, video number seven, and I'm going to get into what is called asymmetric trimming. Essentially, what we're going to do here is trim in two directions uh, at once. Now, that might blow your mind, but um, what we're going to do is trim reductively in two directions. Again, leveraging uh, what we can do with filler in the Media Composer timeline. And this kind of chimes into what I was covering in uh, sync locks. This is kind of a little bit more advanced, but uh, might might help you understand how you can leverage filler and the fluidity of the Media Composer timeline. So let's begin. I have a yet another ancient sequence from my archive of uh, old Avid uh, courseware. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate this sequence again. Command D, duplicate early, duplicate often. And I have uh, multiple copies here. Let me get my slider back so I can double click that icon, the triple frame icon there. And I load up this uh, 2020 copy one over here. We have Dave and Matthew and Lisa. And uh, this is ancient uh, news radio uh, material with maybe a lot of shoulder pads. But Dave and uh, Lisa are vying for an apartment and Lisa's making a run for it. And she wants to go suck up to the boss and get a re recommendation before Dave does. And oh my God, uh, chaos and comedy ensue. But the problem is I'm going to do uh, command shift F and get into big fat frame mode. Command shift F, boom, and L to play forward. <laughs> Whoa, 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 wait a second, Mr. Bojangles. Okay, J backward. All right, so outgoing shot, Matt, Dave, uh, Dave through the door, incoming shot, KL, Shlomo forward. Okay, I just rolled over the cut, and uh, we're into the, the next shot, and uh, Lisa there is through the door, but Dave is nowhere to be found. Yeah. All right, so what we need to do here is uh, a little tweaking. A couple different ways of doing that. First, Command Shift F, get out of big frame mode. And I could simply mark an in and out and just chop all this out and sort of kind of, you know, Dave's here hung up and Lisa's over there and kind of feel it through that way and mark about one second or so and chop that out. And then, uh, but the problem is I have this uh, laughter here. I want to keep that laughter in. And, uh, you know, after I chop it, X, extract, scissors, uh, X key, X looks like scissors, extract. I could then come and roll this uh, laughter underneath like that. And it's not that bad, but, you know, if uh, to, in order to do this more dynamically, I don't have to do so, so many steps. Maybe I have to undo that and redo this. And maybe I chopped out a little too much the first go around. I have to undo that and then undo this dual roller trim thing. Uh, so I'm going to just undo all that. Get back to zero or back to zero and undo again get rid of that extract and uh let's start from scratch so what i would do dynamically is an asymmetric trim because i'm going to lasso these three tracks and again you want to make sure you select a cut nothing but a cut per track and i uh, emphasize that because if you have a little uh segment a little even a single frame segment you go to lasso and it you're ending up uh selecting one of your segment arrows is because you have a little flash frame in there so just be aware of uh, that. So in this case, I'm gonna do my uh, lasso in the background here because I tend to lasso and uh, not use the smart tool so much. And uh, I'm lassoing from the background. If I have a lot of tracks, as I mentioned in one of the earlier demos, you can hold down option and lasso within tracks. Uh, so let's pretend I have a lot of tracks. Now I'm gonna lasso the V1 uh, cut and then the V2, uh, sorry, A1 cut, V1 cut, A1 cut, and A2 cut, boom. And we get uh, thrown into what's known as a dual roll trim or roll trim if you're in Premiere Pro. Now, that's not what I want because I need to uh, trim something out. And I can't, you know, every time I trim to the left, I'm going to be rolling frames in from the right with the dual roller. So a couple different ways of getting into a ripple roll here. I have uh, my cycle trim uh, icons, which are by default mapped to P, left bracket, right bracket. Uh, there's also a icon you can map that will toggle through all three of those. If you can't remember that, if you don't have a default keyboard handy, of course you have your roller with sprockets coming out the left, your roller with sprockets coming out the right, and your roller with sprockets coming out both sides in the middle. So I'm going to click on the uh, left monitor. There's uh, Matthew looking at Dave, and boom, and we've selected that. Now here I could ripple this back, which would be like doing an extract frame by frame, uh, and then get back and dual roller this the laughter in, but that's not what I want either. I want to be dynamic. I want to be cool, like the cool kids in trim mode. So I'm going to uh, shift click and add a roller over here. Now that 
put that track into dual roller. Uh, I'm not going to even venture a guess what that would do. But I'm going to shift click and get rid of that roller. So now I have a yellow ripple roller on the right, on my right, and uh, two ripple rollers on the left. And what I'm going to do is ripple back V1, A2, and at the same time, A1 is going to ripple to the right. Now, uh, I always got to make sure I've got my playhead in the right spot because if you click over here, you're you've kind of inverted which way you want to drag. Now, but the way this is working is I pull to the left, I'm pulling away frames from V1 A2 filler on the left and simultaneously A1 filler on the right. If I keep going, you'll see that this, this locator is moving like that and you can see that the, this track is shortening. I have the durations turned on here as well as my clip frames, which I don't normally have turned on just for demonstration purposes here. And of course I can dynamically use JKL and again, JKL in Media Composer is dynamically trimming. Uh, other systems call that. You have to check off a dynamic trim mode, and Media Composer has always had dynamic trimming on by default. And uh, J and K, I can do a little shlomo uh, to get in the ballpark there. Six to review. <laughs> and that was minus 44. Maybe you want Matthew uh, hung up a little bit. I mean, David hung up with Matthew a little bit more, so... I'll just J back, I can K and J and tap that a little bit like so. Or again, M through question mark, just to sort of tweak that uh, with the less than key, AKA the mm, comma next to M. And again, six, so you can uh, really finesse the cut this way. So again, I rippled back V1, A2, to the left and rippled right the filler here the same amount of frames so that allowed this overlap to occur in the audio track uh which you could call a j cut uh or is that an l cut i think that's an l cut uh maybe it let's just call it an overlap edit uh because at the end of the day we're gonna fix this in post but wait we're in post i'm gonna hit escape get out of trim uh, by the way, here's a, a pro tip. The U key will get you back into trim mode. If you option U, it throws you back into trim mode where your rollers were set a last go around. Option U, U puts you into trim mode. If you option U, it will reset you back with your rollers, your selection in place. So if you're in a complicated timeline uh, with a lot of tracks, and I've done this where it's like play tectonics moving uh, across one another between multiple video tracks and audio tracks and you get out and you're like, eh, I'm not quite satisfied with where I left off. Uh, you option you and you get back into trim mode where your rollers left off. All right, I wanna keep this one short, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording.